Hello everybody. Welcome to a stand in live for Wayne Wood Turner. Mark here. Welcome to my workshop in Westward O. And you have to say Westward O because it's got an exclamation mark on the end. It's the only town in Britain that's got an exclamation mark. So, what am I doing tonight? Well, I thought I'd turn a nice big bowl, put some fruit in it, varnish, you know, lacquer it. Not really. I'm doing these. And I was just showing the earworms. I can keep the corners on them. See? So hopefully we'll keep the corners on this one too. Now, my esteemed earworms to begin with are playing the wood turner, obviously, because even though he's got a knackered knee, he can sit. So that's fine. Yeah, I can sit. I'm okay so, sitting down. He could have sat turning. He could have turned sitting on a stool, couldn't he? For all you lot. But no, he can stay at home. And we've got the boss lady herself, Ruby Claire from Canada. How are you guys? And I'm going to sit through this one too, Mark. Mark. How are you doing? You should stand. Mark. <laughs> I can see me getting the blame for a couple of few things tonight. Yes, you can, because tonight I'm turning this. There you go. Go close up. Piece of chestnut. It's square. Uh, where's the tape measure? Square-ish, anyway. Um, eight and a eight and a half by eight and a half, funnily enough. And it's one and three quarters deep. Now, just saying to Wayne, the first thing I need to do is uh, this is held on a tenon, but I've got it the wrong way round. So at the moment, the grain is running in a frown and I need to turn it the other way so that the grain is running in a smile. So it's a frown at the moment and we want it to go in a smile. So I'm just going to turn a mortise on here first, turn it round, then start shaping the bottom, put a tenon on as a whole point, And I'm going to just bring up my YouTube chat. There it is. Now I have sent the link for this out to a couple of other people. Uh, Pete might be coming in halfway through. He's been down here with me the last couple of days, helping me reorganize my workshop. And I've oh got, looking like you can just see it. I've got a button on the wall now that turns my dust extraction on. I'm so happy. Makes it so easy. Little things, please, little minds. Right, laid down a zero. One of these two is going to start reading the names out. I'll let you have the honors, Wayne. Oh, cheers, Ruby. You're all hot. Well, you have a much better accent than I do. <laughs> right. I'm not going all the way to the top here. It's actually brought me in about halfway down. Um, so the people may well have to put uh, some, some more chat in so I can see who's here. Uh, we've got uh, mine starting at Wivy Woodshed, uh, Doug, uh, Doug Miller, uh, Ward Wilson, uh, Susie the Swiss Woodturner, uh, Pete is in. Pete, you're getting called names because Mark can't find anything because he's been putting stuff away. Oh, you grass. <laughs> uh, I'll Terry, verify that. I, I heard that. Yeah, Terry Bartlett's in. Uh, Rob from Copper Owl. Um, Al's in, even Albert, that's Al Albert Dawson. Uh, Todd at Glen Cove, Fred Gulliver, uh, Dale, Old Man River, uh, Andy, Door 60. Lucy's in, hi Lucy, that's Lucy Bundy Rowe. Just going to uh, stop you there oh. a sec, Wayne. Yep. That's the tool I was using to cut the mortise. It's a mortise cutting tool. It's basically just an angled scraper with the same dovetail angle on it as I use for the jaws. It's literally just a scraper. You just push it in, bring it to the side, cuts the dovetail, and away you go. 
Okay, then, mate. There you go. Okay, where do we get to? Where uh, Thomas Kenny's in. Uh, Ward is seeing that his internet is a bit spotty and he can't respond in the chat. Uh, Miss T's in. Evening, Miss T. Um, I think I mentioned Terry Bartlett. Uh, Roger Kent. Mark, Alan. didn't you want to do the back before you uh, do the front? No, uh, what I'm doing, Ruby, I'm just turning it around. So, like I explained, I had to turn it around, get the proper crane orientation. This is now going to be the bottom. So, okay. I'm going to shake the bottom, create the hold point, get my corners established, do the bottom, then I'll turn it around. The, where I cut the mortise just now, that's going to be the inside of the dish. Okay, good. Pay no. attention. Uh, Lucy has said that she has proof that Mark can keep corners on something in her living room. Yes, I did this demo at uh, Yandles a while ago. Right. Um, the, the reason that uh, people start extracting the urine uh, with Mark about the, the corners is when he was doing a demo at Yandles a year past September, I think it was. Um, and I was down there with uh, Jimmy and... Um, Mark saw me sitting, looking a bit bored, not doing anything. So he said, do you want to have a go at uh, doing something? So he just turned a square edge dish. Um, but Successfully. He had, he, well, but you had taken the corners off. So I went ahead and, and turned one and just did it with a straight off the tool finish. And it was, um, oh, at least 10 times better than Mark. <laughs> Yeah, actually, in fact, it was. It was. <laughs> and I hated him for it. The right, other, the other, the... Oh, go on, Mark, sorry. I said, all I'm doing is just cleaning up. There's a lot of stop-start with these because you have to make sure that the corners are really clear because you will just lose them. Ducks in the background. Hello, Doc. Hey, Hi, girls and boys. Hey, How is everybody? Oh, Great, very well, thanks. thank you. The other thing yeah. now, uh, uh, Mark was sorting out um, his uh, spirit stains before we started. So looking for some black and yellow. And um, th that's, that's another thing that I could get the blame for because the first time Mark did a demo using using black and yellow it was my idea to use black and yellow it pretty was as well right. right what's going on in the chat i still not down to the bottom yet and andrew was in did you care sorry go on before i do anything else i'm just going to establish uh, my whole point so i'm going to use speed sizer air calipers oh, good mixing said no one ever <laughs> if, if anybody thinks i give mick cues a hard time it's only because he deserves it exactly <laughs> right i'm still scrolling down here uh brent's in brent beecroft um and eduk is asking are you doing captain rings on this one uh i don't think he is no uh, Norman Greenwell's in. No. Oh, that's that's <laughs> got all of it. that's done a real big jump. Um, Alan Gibb, Spider Spid. Hi, Spider. Oh no! Look out, Mark. Mig Deuce is command, and he says you better hide your cling spore. Yeah, hang on. Uh, Jamie's in as well. Good evening, Jamie. I'm still about halfway down the chart, I guess. Um, Shug's in. Evening, Shug. <laughs> Steve Heal. Mark at Turn Again Crafts. Uh, Andy Woodwork Learner. Still going down. Now, they may look at times like my wrist is getting close to these corners. That's an optical illusion from the camera. Okay? Don't panic. 
Mr. Mannering. <laughs> Pete said, guilty is charged about putting stuff away. Those drawers were in my van when I got home. Everything else is either in the right place or the bin. <laughs> <clears throat> Right, I'm, I'm still scrolling down this, I'm sorry. Martin Ford's in. It's tough. Um, Robert Hodgepodge. Right, the plan, if you can see here, this smaller circle here is the actual tenon that's going to hold the piece when I turn it around. And this base, the larger base here, is going to act as two things. It's going to act as a stopping point for the jaws to rest up against. It's going to be nice and flat. It's also going to be the actual finished base that this is going to sit on. So this is going to be a raised up um, dish. Okay. So I just need to go down a little bit further with this. It's going to be actually quite exaggerated. Okay. And Zed's in. Mm -hmm. uh, still going down. Obviously, Mick has been mentioned, so we know that Mick's in. And Rex B's here. Evening, Rex. Hi, Rex. Right. Now I can start throwing the corners on. JP has said Mark only wanted a mild urine extraction session tonight. AJK, Huey, <laughs> and I never got a link. If you actually look, um, yeah. JP, if you have a look in the, the group that's usually set up for Doug, the link is in there. And I'll verify that. Yep, I saw it. Right, I think that's just going to get in there. Finally. This is a bevel rubbing cut all the way around. Basically a push cut. Just wants the other woods behaving. Yeah, Chipping out a little bit there. Don't, whatever you do, don't go all the way to the corner. <laughs> No, I'm leaving myself some. I just change gouge to a sharper one. And I might go to that one. Oh, sorry, Alex. Looks like I missed Alex. No, Susie, there's going to be painting. No, no burning. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Haley's in as well. Sorry, Haley. Andy wants to know if you're going to use Day Glow Pink with Fluffy Bear. <laughs> no. I'm going to use black and I'm going to use yellow. Now, well, Jamie's, at, Jamie, Jamie's asking a very relevant question to you, Mark. Did you make any gold leaf size for tonight's demo? <laughs> well, <coughs> just for no, Jamie, no, no, yes. No. Pot, pots of it, Jamie, because Kim's away on holiday. Uh, that, that was um, from a private conversation. Uh, That's from a very private conversation. <laughs> yeah, just before my <laughs> live last week. Right. Okay. Yeah. Pete says he's looking forward to the captive ring and paint in uh, day glow pink. 
And Susie says the gold leaf would go nicely with black paint, and I agree. I think Pete's still got all Mark's gold leaf, though. May have. Yeah, I think he has. I'll give you an escape there, Mark. Where that cut gets a lot of fun when you're getting all that air. This finishing cut, Mark. Right. Are you sure that's chestnut? It looks a hell of a lot like ash. Well, I bought it from a tree surgeon who owns a sawmill, and he assured me it was chestnut. Hmm. Uh, we, you know that um, that that huge bull that we that we turned at Glens. Yeah. Yeah. The tree surgeon said that was sycamore. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't. That, no, that wasn't. All right. Right, Lucy's just put in that um, she's made Andy buy some bright pink filament for the 3D printer. <laughs> and Andy Woodwork Learner has put in a serious question. Have you re replaced that box of Maltesers yet, Mark? The box of Maltesers? Shut up about the box. She watches these, you know. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get me hung. Right. That's okay, actually. What I do that now. That green is looking pretty nice. Yeah, they look alright. They're okay. I might just do one little pass just up here. Hopefully, it's a nice finishing cut. Well, should be, you know me. Nice one. Yep. Yeah. That's better. Right. McDo says, just, Mark, don't worry, that, that tool mark will sand right out. <laughs> it will sand right out. I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> clean up antenna. Now remember, the small one is sacrificial. The big one is the one I'm actually going to live with. Which means this will probably get turned around and uh, put on the either. Well, I'll probably do it on the um, vacuum chuck. It's quick, quick and easy. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. there's sanding now. Yay! And sanding, of course, is going to be done with clean spore abrasives. There you go. Take those out of the way. Get my sanding box. Now it's going to be a combination of power sanding, hand sanding, uh, rotary sanding. I suppose we are better start with. Boz is in. Hey, hey Boz. Hi, right, Boz. Hey, Boz. Bonjour. Right. So, first thing, turn the lathe down. Don't need full speed for doing this. Second thing, reach over here to my new button. Press Yay. the extraction. Mm 
Mick says, sand it like you stole it. No, the new saying is sand it like Mick does. <laughs> All the dust is going down the chute. Isn't that great? I can yeah. hear what you guys are saying about me. <laughs> well, Pete just commented that Lisa noticed the wound on his head from the Klingspore stand. Oh, yeah. He's Rob in the chat. No, he's not. No. Oh. Rob, you've got a lawsuit coming <laughs> your way, buddy. <laughs> I was hoping he'd be here. I need a discount code. I've got to order some more sandpaper. Yeah, and uh, Jimmy said, uh, you can't hear what I'm thinking, though. <laughs> Sorry, right, Jamie, that would probably be quite a quiet conversation. <laughs> so that was 100 quid. Uh, sorry, 120. Go to 180 next. <laughs> Mick is telling me Mark was, he was mean at Harrogate. He rationed the amount of abrasive he was allowed. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's why, he, that's why, he, that's why he stole the rest of it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was after the first suitcase was filled. <laughs> Now, when I'm getting out to here, just turn this off a sec. The solid wood that you can see spinning is fine. But as you get out to the corners, it starts to bump the abrasive and the sander. So you can do as much as you can. But what you don't want to do is keep it flat against the piece. Like this. You want to open the face up a bit so that as the corners come round, doesn't catch on the corner of your arbor all right because if you were like this and it came around it's a good chance you could bump through all right now now the other thing about about that um is that the way mark is actually doing this and sanding the um the wood and air part of it if you have the uh, what you do need to try and do is try and get your sand and arbor as upright as possible without getting the catch. Because if you have it just sand at the bottom, you will end up sanding just one edge of the uh, of the corners, which mm -hmm. which can actually um, once you've turned the inside, you will be able to notice that there's extra sanding in in parts of the the square edge. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Rex B has a question mark, and I could answer for you if you'd like. What does the RPT that follows your name, does that mean you got knighted at Harrogate? Sure. That means I'm a registered professional turner. I own the register of turners. Which means I've passed rigorous assessments interviews my work's been judged to be of a certain standard and i was very honored to be accepted to the register a year ago ruby is also an rpt and she was the first foreign female and canadian rpt that we accepted onto the register Sounds like I had a lot of strikes against me to start. I was going to say, we didn't hold any of those against you. Right. I'm going to use the power sander <laughs> just to do the corners. 
Peter says he seldom leaves Mark's place without some damage. And, and, and Lucy says, that's usually damage to your liver. <laughs> oh, my. And Andy Woodwork Learner has said, oh, Turner, I was thinking of shorter words for you, Mark. No, they're <laughs> usually directed against me. Now, because I'm going to stay in the bottom of this, I need to make sure I've got as good a surface as possible. So the next grid is 320. And before anybody asks, no, I'm not going to use true grid on this because I want to keep your fingers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Andy, the Valley Wood Turner has joined us. Hi, Andy. Hello, Andy. Hi, Andy. <laughs> JP said shorter words. That would mean uh, that would make it Mark Beckett AGK. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, JP. Good one. <laughs> and then the final final grid is 400. And these are all the 50 mil sanding discs available from myself and Cleansport. Right, Anthony Green is asking quite a relevant question. When power sanding, is there any difference using a right angle drill as opposed to a forward facing one? The um, with the right angle drill, you get better access, certainly on doing the the inside of bowls. But what I've actually found, and I've used both, um, Terry Cox, I think it was from over in the states, actually sent me a Dewalt right angle drill, a corded one, uh, which works abs absolutely fine. Works fine. But what I've found is that they have less power and less speed than a, a forward facing corded drill and and the same with the forward facing uh, cordless drill they don't have the same speed or the same power as a, a corded uh, forward facing one they basically, yeah, don't, they basically I found, just don't spin as fast I found the same thing right. and whether you go with a, a right angle one or a regular one Depends on what is more comfortable in your hand. De oh, yeah, definitely. Right. There you go. <clears throat> so that's and the bottom done. R Robert Hodgepodge has said nothing compares to Drilly. <laughs> oh, well, well I'm, I'm trying to get Sandy integrated, but um, either the Sandy is new at the moment. <laughs> no. Everything might go pear shaped because I'm having to move, move the keyboard and the mouse. So I'm bring this up. Ow. Now, as, as Rex has pointed out, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Oh, we don't know about those. Uh, Brent, Brent is asking a, a question as well. Is that horse chestnut or sweet chestnut? Uh, Believe it's sweet chestnut. <laughs> hey, sorry, Doug. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I just uh, never mind. <laughs> just turn that off. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. Mick is asking now. You've just turned that piece around, Mark. But Mick was asking, is that a chip on the bottom corner? Now, see, you've turned it around twice now, so I don't know which there? corner you're talking about. Yeah, there is a little chip just there. Now, what I could do is I could drop down a grid and just make that go away. Mm -hmm. 
If it wasn't Meg, it would have been Ben. One of the two of them would have spotted it. I've got plenty of time. I'm still figuring out. I'm still trying to work out in my head what I'm going to uh, actually do as a colour scheme. Now, uh, Rex is asking, what is the difference between horse and sweet chestnut, as he's never gotten to turn either one? Is one better than the other? I think they're both about the same, to tell you the truth. And that's been my experience. Yeah. Uh, very close up. There you go, Mick. You happy now? That's not a chip. Mick says, if you could use a hand plane, it's an easy fix. Uh, let me think. Oh, I can't. <laughs> right. Here we go. Now, if Stuart Farini ever watches this, I hold him completely responsible for this next bit because I have a new hairbrush. There you go. And it was Stuart's fault. All Stuart's fault. I hold you completely responsible for having to spend money on this. And Yeah, I misunderstood what he said. I went to look at those and I was a little surprised. <laughs> Paul Hannaby has joined us. Welcome, Paul. Hey. Hey, Paul. Hello, Paul. How are you doing, mate? Yeah. Where's my control box? There it is. I'm trying to speed down a bit. I'm going to start in close to get a nice solid. Are you wanting the edges done, Mark? If not, stop now. That's definitely yellow. Yeah. If you're not wanting any overspill under the edges. I'm just going to have a band of black around the outside of the yellow. Right. Okay. Right. Well, when you're using the black, go from the opposite center towards the outside. That way. Yeah, because that way you're actually spraying. The, if, if you go okay. where you're going now, you're going to end up hitting the side and putting color on the side. If you go from from there outwards, it that tends way. to you take, yeah that way you tend not to get any overspray. Ascent pins has just joined us. Hello, Ascent. I tell you what, I like That's that hairbrush. Who's? As Ascent pens? Is that Derek? As oh, Ascent. Yeah. Hey, Derek. How are you, buddy? Hey, Derek. That's that's Derek Williamson. That is. Make a good idea, Mark. That's blacks for hiding chips, yes? Now, I'm not going to bother cleaning this out. Way too much. But. Now, Ben Jamins apologizes for being late. He says he tripped over his new shark jaws and so just stayed on the floor with them for a bit of a bonding session <laughs> oh, <God>. oh me <laughs> yeah, i've got to ask but did you share your big mac with it as well though john, john m, m just going? yeah sorry just beat you wayne <laughs> that's not black enough right. and jp said that agk Tripped over some sawdust today. <laughs> <laughs> oh me! Yeah, that could be easy to do. I, for him, <laughs> good, yeah. For him, especially good, for yeah. him. Yeah. Piece, piece of A4 paper lying on the on the ground, edgy cake fall over it. Yeah, the, the thing oh. what you've got to realize is that um, sawdust to Andrew is shavings <laughs> to us. It, it's blanks for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. 
<laughs> I couldn't resist that one. <laughs> That's black. Too much speed. Yeah, too much speed. Yeah. Too heavy on the trigger. You're starting to get the centrifugal there, which I don't yeah, think you're after. Yeah. Right. Well, Close JP speed. says go really fast and make it splat out. <laughs> Andy Mead has just joined us. Hello, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. That's better. There's a bit of bleed. It's got a little bit of black, or a lot of black, and a little bit of yellow in there. Nobody ever said I was an artist. Right. John what, M. Why, leave it alone. Is, <laughs> yeah, John M. is asking... I would like to try airbrushing. What features should I look for when buying one? I'll pass that over because I tend to buy cheap. Uh, that's probably the most expensive airbrush I've bought. It's 35 quid. Uh, go to, well, somebody could chuck Stuart Perini's last video in. See what I can do about that. Yeah, you see what you can do about that. And what I'll do, I'll chuck in um, EGK's link for video. later. Yeah. yeah. Just move the mouse because it's right over. So I can't see the screen. So, yeah, pretty rubbish. I, I, just, I just can't do black and yellow. For some reason, it's just not my thing. So, anyway. I tend right, to link. find when you look at an airbrush, I like one that feeds on the top like Mark's as opposed to a side feed or one that takes a bottle that attaches. Okay. So you prefer gravity fed rather than um, siphon effect? Yeah, I find the, uh, the side feed or the siphon quite often... Uh, the uh, container for the paint gets in the way when you're airbrushing different shapes like this. Yeah, okay. Right, the link I've just put in there is to um, Andrew, AGK Woodworks, um, Premiere, which is at 9.30 tonight. And Paul has said, on the thing to look out for when buying an airbrush is the needle size. Right. You need to match that type of paint in use. Thicker pins need a, a bigger needle size. That's right. And Jamie has one of the, uh, one of the ones that's got a, a built-in compressor, so you do, don't need an external compressor. Yeah, if you do have one that takes a compressor where you can read out the uh, PSI, test it out and see which. Uh, PSI works best for you with the paint you want to use because you can get a variation between 15 to 40 PSI. And Paul's also put in spirit size like the ones Mark is using and the click inks and air push paints would all be fine with a, a 0 0.2 millimeter needle, thick paints might need a, a 0.5 or a 0.8. Wait, do you want to plug your headphones in, mate? This sounds like the battery's going. All right, okay. So the Paul, Jim did. has joined us. And I have, uh, I've added the link to Stuart's last, uh, last video. Now, as Paul points out, you can get some airbrush kits with multiple needles which can be swapped over. Mm -hmm. And Alex, you said that he bought one of Emma's kits.
Okay, yeah. same at the bottom. A lot of stop and starting. Yep, I might be with that thickness. Now, as Andy's pointed out, um, if you get a, a full shop compressor, make sure you get an adapter that can also filter out the water because you will get condensate building up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this down in stages because I want to keep the mass in the middle. Yeah, and Paul has said that he agrees with me. No need to spend a fortune on airbrushes for what most of us turners do. Uh, some of the airbrushes he uses uh, cost him uh, 758. Now, I've been using the same set of airbrushes that I bought oh, probably three or four years ago which was a, a set of five um, bought them off Wish from China. Uh, it was either a set of five or set of six airbrushes. When I bought them, it was 75 pounds for the set. And mm. they came with, uh, some were gravity fed, some were side feed, some were bottom tighten feed. Uh, they came with, with everything uh, for about 75 pounds in, in a decent box. I think they're around about £130 now for that same set. Chris Cox has joined us. Hello, Chris. There we go. I'm happy hey, with those. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's lots of places you can go to uh, to get airbrush kits. You can uh, uh, Some of the best places to go to are our shops. Mm, yes. Yeah. And Robert Hodge, Hodge said, that's what I tell my wife. I want to keep my mass in the middle so I don't get too weak. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> oh, the, the Zed's in. He started. He started. Bread is like the sun. It rises in the east and sets in the west. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Woodwork Intermediate says he's got at least five airbrushes, but he's got to get around to using them. <laughs> yeah, now, Paul said um, the screen spirit dies. He prefers the size and feed type of airbrush uh, because he has a different bottle for each color, so you just swap the bottle as you go along. <laughs> and I tend to have, um, seeing as how I've got, I've got this set, I tend to have, um, because I'll probably use maybe two or three different colours on one piece. So I have different airbrushes, so I just need to swap over the airbrush. And Ruby's put in, if you want some good airbrush training, check out Blair School of Airbrushing. In fact, there's loads of um, sites on, on YouTube where you can check out airbrushing techniques. Well, this is a school that you can actually go to and take lessons right there. Right, and it's okay. Except, it's, just, it's an exceptionally good school. We set up one course for one week where all the people in the course were wood turners, and it was geared to wood turners. Okay. And he does travel to Europe and Great Britain and teach over there periodically. So if you check his course schedule, you can see where uh, where he's teaching. Okay. Um, Mark, Rex has just uh, sent, um, sent you some uh, coffees. Oh, thank you very much, Rex. That's very kind. Uh, he is backstage. Yep. That's, the, that's the link. That, that's the link at the top of the page, by the way. That's the Mark's Buy Me a Coffee. Here you go, Pete. Evening, Pete. Oh, yeah. Wait, where is everything? I can't find a thing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that just away. accidentally fell into my van. I did just check when you said that, and they haven't. <laughs> they, are, they are still here. <laughs> that must have been the spare set, Pete. If you can't find it, it's in the bin. Right. 
where that yes, yes. drill press needs to go. With the drill press. <laughs> I think you could probably see the drill press. Just, just yeah. There. It's not. It's not going to be there. If anybody wants, come down, is it? Hey, if anybody wants a drill press, free. Feel free to come down and pick one up. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it. It's not a very good one then. Silver line. What do you think? All right. Okay. Mark now uh, has a good drill press that he got from Terry. Um, before Terry moved, so we're looking. All at right. About, about two years ago. And that one was put on the floor whilst we put the new one in, in its place on the bench. And it's still there. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Sorry, when Mark asked me to come in, I was just cooking dinner. So um, I was just finished eating it and I'm here now. So Andy uh, AGK is, uh, said, Pete cleared up after turning all the wing balls for you, Mark. <laughs> Hold on. Say again. Uh, Andy from AGK has said um, Pete cleared up after turning all of those wing balls for you, Mark. Yeah. Uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> Pete, um, Pete, uh, I've got to say, clean I up, say I <laughs> no, I, got, I want to say it publicly, and I'm going to embarrass the fool now. <laughs> even though, even though it did bang on his head. Pete's been a star. The, the last two days, he came down here. We've moved my dust extractor. He's plumbed it through. It's in the back room now. It's the other side of that wall. We moved the gantry. We did the extension on my bed, bed extension on my lathe. Uh, what else did we do, Pete? We cleared that there? corner out, cleared that corner over there, and we put this monitor, this monitor on the wall. You've never heard two men swear and curse so much <laughs> trying to get this monitor on the wall. <laughs> monitor on the wall. But he's been an absolute star. So thank you very much, Pete. Uh, you're welcome, mate. Right. Um, happy food lovers just come in. Good evening. Are you happy? Hey, Beth. That's my niece, Beth. Beth, okay. Hello, Beth. Oh, uh, and Mick is saying, look, Wayne, there's a brushy lol. I never saw that. I've got to say, Mark actually cleaned up some shavings. Tell him, Pete. Tell him. Tell him. Go on, tell him. <laughs> How finally, many times? After several hours of wading through them, he got embarrassed enough to sweep them to a corner. But he did actually vacuum out his bouncer today. Mm. I don't know if anybody can hear that, but if it sounds like it's really, really thin, it's because it it's really, really thin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm talking, I'm talking two, three mil. And Dewey Shed's just come in. Evening, Dewey. Hi, Dewey. I believe there was a uh, discussion last night about a thickness gauge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <the> going <clears throat> Where did you put it, Pete? On the end of the lane. Rex B has said, you see all that pile of wood against the wall? Is all the rest it wins? Lol. Right. That, that's waiting for Mark to get some shelf Wait, units. <laughs> oh, I'm back. Andy says, Mark, shine a dim light through it and you won't need a bright one. I was, good. I was panicking then. I remember. Take the... Take the uh, <laughs> Take the church keys away from it. Yes. Right. Mick says that if you can see yellow and black stain, you've gone too far. Mm. So you can just. There's the gap. Yep. yep. And that is at the center.
10, 11 mil. But out here, it's about three. I've still got to take the center out yet. Notice the uh, temp cage. Um, are you still thinking about putting the bead in the center? No, I've given up on the bead. Oh, you've given up thin. on the bead. Okay. Yes, the bead, bead's not happening. But the bead was going to have a um, ring on it. Right. Just, um, <laughs> just start thinking about taking that 10 off. No, because I've got the false bottom, haven't just, I? Just seeing. No, yes. I've got the false. No, I've got the false. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's yeah. that's that's ten mil. So I've got twenty mil in the base. Just seeing. Yeah, I know. I actually speed the thing up now a bit. <clears throat> oh, okay, up to twelve hundred. That's ben right. said, uh, "What was that mess on the wall, Mark?" Oh, wait, my bad. It's a board. <laughs> Rex is asking, uh, do you have your first holy piece of wood? I think that he, he's meaning a, a funnel. Martin says, I have to admit my wood pile is in the dining room, dry and nice temperature. Won't tell you what the wife says. <laughs> That's why I don't have a wife, Martin. I have a husband. Um, Todd is asking, how much warping will occur with weather changes on a bowl that thin with square corners? Is that wood dry, Mark? Yeah, yeah, this is dry. Right. Yes. If Mark was Probably. to take this, if Mark was to take this straight from the workshop leave it in a fairly cool place in the house for a wee while and then take it into a warmer place in the house you probably wouldn't get any warping or cracking on it because it is a uh, kiln dried no it's not kiln dried oh it's, okay it's been it's been down for 15 years it's been air dried so it's fairly well air dried. It's probably been stored in a fairly dry place. Um, maybe with some te uh, temperature and moisture changes, but it's it's going to be fairly stable, I would think. Blimey. I never do things easy, way, right, do I? <laughs> What's the point? I was going to say, why? Three and a half. Three and a half. So I've got plenty of space. <coughs> Stop chuck a couple of beats on there. Just coming up to about five to nine, Mark. Cool. Right. Just get your finishing cut. Nice little pass from about here. Right, are, you, are you going to show that on the overhead or the side view or what? Yeah. That one. There you go. Or right, stock. That's better. That there one, yeah. Did you notice how Mark checked the back of the door? Yeah. Yeah. Would finisher be a little easier to use making that cut? With a what? An easy wood finisher, you know, with no. the round cutter? I wouldn't know, Ruby. Never used one. Oh, dear. Never used one. Oh, 
the same principle, he's um, using a scraper, which is basically the same thing. Now I've got the scraper up on its edge, so I'm sheer scraping. Yeah, known as that. I'm not Ms. coming T out any further. Yeah. Mr. T is So you went for the bead after all? Yeah, well, I just went for loads of beads. No, I'm gonna, they'll <laughs> sound up. They'll sound up. <laughs> oh, he's such a funny fella. Loads of beads, huh? Let me sort this drill out. That's over there. That goes over there. That still looks like ours. ash. Still looks like ash. Yep. Uh, yep. It's, not, it's definitely not ash. Okay. No, I think it's sweet chestnut. Yeah, because Pete's seen this piece in the flesh, so. Yep. Right. Turn the speed down. Turn Jim the Jim should down. come in. Evening, Jim. Hey, hey Jim. Jim. Good evening. Oh, Wayne, is your knee any better today? Oh, no, not at all, Doug. Not at all today, huh? Not at all, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, yeah, so am I. <laughs> I bet. I bet you are. So, yeah, so is my knee. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not going to go for the neck amputation, though. I don't care what she says. No, that's a little extreme. It works. Yeah, it would work, but... I mean, I've got a band, so I can do medical procedures. <laughs> oh. Right, when I, co when I come down to Mark's, I'm definitely not stealing his beats. Wayne, you would need a step ladder to get on the bed if you stay the peaks. <laughs> now, Wayne's normal size, Ruby. Well, the thing I found at your place, Pete, where the, the doorknobs were all at eye level for me. <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm not joking either. And then, well, and says, my kids grew up here and they could open and close doors, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Woodwork Learner has put in, Wayne, Wayne, welcome to the Falling Apart Club. Andy, I'm only 70. I shouldn't be falling apart. I'm still young. <laughs> oh, wait till you get to my age, Wayne. I just said you could always turn your own wooden peg leg. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, and Mix put in, Wayne, can you tell Mark thanks for helping on my platter? He's still sulking for the whole. <laughs> oh, gosh. You're right back. <laughs> Bit of hand sand in there. Some J flex. Yes, I Lucy, saying... I, I am older than Wayne by at least a hundred oh, yeah. years. I was there uh, seeing the mark uh, before we went live that I got my chainsaw back. It's just been in for its annual service. And the guy who who runs the shop, it's his own business, is in his 80s and he still works six days a week. Wow. And the, the the amount of knowledge he's got about um, about chainsaws, lawnmowers, everything like that is absolutely untrue. And he he, um, he does a good deal as well. Excellent. My brother-in-law put his chainsaw in for a service for the first time since 
pre-COVID. And he was really upset oh. when he came back. Because he cleaned all the blood off it. <laughs> he did catch his hand and luckily he didn't do that much damage. But uh, he did manage to spray his pencil with blood and left it there as a warning. Right, here we go. Hang on. Andy is, this is work learner again, said... Uh, Wayne, I couldn't even stand last week. At least now I can get to the get to the loo without crawling. Oh Jesus, Andy, that's a nightmare. Absolutely. And Zed has said the problem is Wayne. The problem is sorry. The problem is Wayne was born before people learned to keep track of time, so it's not clear how old he is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Zed. You're all Brian right. at Greenhaven Creations has joined us. Hello, Brian. Evening, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hodge says, sounds like him in college. But I've got to be really careful with this now. <laughs> I've got to be really careful because it's split. Just there. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. I see it moving. Yeah. See it? Yeah. I fear. Go red. Just there. Yeah. So I'm being really careful with it now. See what happens when I go up a grid. But I'm standing back here and standing into there because I don't want to be anywhere, anywhere near this. If it does go off. You could hit with a little bit of Diego. It's only a play piece. Doesn't matter. Yeah, and Mick, Mick said, thick black paint mark. That'll fix it. <laughs> the... I'd rather use the CA. Or two part of Foxy. Lucy's that holding the breath. I'm not. I'm nah, nah, I'll be fine. Them. I'm just waiting for Mark to sign through the bottom of it. No joke, it's a bit of, it could happen. <laughs> Zed said a, a little bit of structural shellac. <laughs> yeah, and Susan, Susan said said, several layers of gold leaf will hold it together. Yeah. Mm. Ruby, I did use uh, CA and coffee grounds last night. And how did it come out? Oh, looks marvelous. Good. Looks marvelous. That was that was an absolutely gorgeous piece. It yeah, really it was. It, it really, sorry, it really is. It uh, looks better now. <laughs> I even filled that that uh, bar conclusion in with coffee grounds. It looks really good. Oh, good. Yeah, Martin Ford has said, uh, Mark, wouldn't it have been easy to buy a Frisbee on Amazon? <laughs> and Zed, <laughs> Zed has said, uh, even with that crack, that piece is way more secure than most of what he turns. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Is it true? Well, that one yesterday had a, it was close to flying. Well, Paul has joined us. Welcome, Paul. Hey, Paul. Yeah, I'm surprised Ed didn't send one flying last night. That one was it had two cracks converging and it was it was close. And Mick has said, Mark, I'm impressed. It's still got four corners. Yeah. Say, check me out. <laughs> Mind you, I still think my finish was better straight off the tool than that. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Right. Trust me. Never Mark does lots of four cornered things. I know because I found the jig he used on the bandsaw to cut the round ones into squares. Okay. Oh, you lying <laughs> no, to, to tell you the truth, Pete, uh, Pete that was uh, well, that was one of my suggestions. Yeah. I'm sure that's the way that they used to be done as well. So there you go. That's a bit thin. It's a bit square. 
Got corners on it. It's black and yellow, even though it's rubbish on the back. Right. Alan jo Sorry, Mark. Alan Jones has put a question in here. Uh, guys, I've recently acquired some freshly cut down ash. I've turned three balls wet, but my question is, what does the moisture content need to be before I can second turn? Uh, I would say between sort of 10, live, and 10 and 15 percent, I'd say. Mm, yeah. 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 If you're going to use a moisture meter, the first thing I say is, if you've got a workbench yeah. in your workshop, test it on that. Because the ambient, temp uh, ambient humidity of your workshop is what it wants to be. So wherever you live, it will be different. But 10 to 15 percent ish. So is that square enough for you? Yeah, Very nice, works. Mark. Yeah. Pretty square. And is it black and yellow enough for you? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd sand yeah. it off. It's my black and it's my black and yellow problem again. Right. I'd, 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 I'd sand it black, off, Mark. I put the black here, but the yellow was still wet. Yeah. So it ran. We've, we've got a couple of things um, coming through. Uh, Mick has said, um, Wayne, I've gone through so much timber practicing your finishing cut. Keep on practicing. Um, Mick just said, uh, good live. Alan Jones has said, it, he's across, where well, he's a bit further south than where I used to live, but he's across in, in Darlington in County Durham. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's very wet here. Yeah, I'll agree with that. He used and this. Paul Hannaby has a good point. He says, keep weighing the ball until it stops losing weight. Mm -hmm. Then turn it again because at that point it's stable. Yeah. Don't get hung up on a moisture content. And I agree with Paul on that. Yeah. There you go. That's right, probably so the all, best way. We can all blame Hodgepodge for this now because I've just seen his comment. Right. So... Back here somewhere. No, Robert, he's not just leaving the tenon. This was okay. all planned out from the beginning. No, I was yep. because I went very thin. Can if you put it like this the truck on a high vacuum and then just turn one mill off the back and get rid of that paint. <laughs> I'm going to do all sorts of things with it. Hang on. Right, Alex, you... um, Alex Wurzel has said, well, it looks okay, Mark, but no gold leaf and no captive ring was a bit of a downer. <laughs> Karsten Peterson has joined us. Welcome, Karsten. Hey, Karsten. Hey, Karsten. Hey, Karsten. And now Mick Dews is, is actually asked a quite relevant question. Mark, is that not too thin to go on a vacuum chuck? Well, we're going to find out in a minute. I think it is. Now, that, uh, now th th that is a relevant question because um, vacuum chucks work well unless the wood is too thin because obviously wood is porous mm -hmm. and it does draw air through it, which is why uh -huh. you, don't tend, you don't tend to use vacuum chucks Shut on birds um, and you don't tend to use vacuum <laughs> chucks on something that is very, very thin. I can see Pete's shoulders going. He's laughing his head off because he knows what I'm struggling with. Mark, I did say we should put our screen in it a foot higher. <laughs> Shut up. Now it wasn't the screen. It was the, the vacuum chucks even longer than the knockout bar. <laughs> right. Here. Now, Zed is asking, um, you could finish the service with thin CA glue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this is Mark we're talking about here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before Harry said, if the bowl crumples on the back chuck, yes, it's too thin. Thanks, Paul. Let's, let's find out, shall we? Cracking it, um, boys, there, Paul. Okay, the cracks uh, out near the rim. So this shouldn't be an issue. <clears throat> It's only flexing quite a bit. Yeah, I have sucked the bottom out of one before with vacuum chuck. It's it's a little disappointing when that happens. Yeah, I have too. Yeah. 
Uh, Karsten said, I've just come back from my wood turning club class. He was inspired by Terry's live on Sunday and turned his first ever off center bowl. Congratulations, hey, Karsten. Karsten. Right, that's pulling full vacuum. So, here we go, folks. Anything could happen in the next 30 seconds. Hang on, let's get my face shield on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Susie's asking a question. If the ball crumbles, will Mark get sucked into the chuck? Well, we will find Maybe. out. <laughs> Maybe. I keep watching. You never know. Yeah, right. Just make sure Turn you have your face shield on. I've got my safety specs on. Not face down plan. zero. I put that over there, I don't have to put my arm on the other side. Right. Gentle cuts in towards the headstock. Stop a lathe. Drop me to a rest a little bit. Did we say hello to Mark at Turnigan Crafts? Yeah, I think we did. Okay. I didn't. Hello, Mark. Good to I see you. Either. Hello, Mark. Mark's from Bristol as well, so uh, okay. one of my club members. All right. And Roy's just come in. Hey, Roy. Hey, Roy. Oh, Roy, I thought you were going down the pub. That's where he's watching from. Yeah, he's, he's probably been out <laughs> making some deals somewhere. At the pub, half time now, he says. Oh, I he knew he's at the pub. Cool. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Started to get a wobble on. It's all right. Just discretion is better on better part of other. I think just tidy that up and make a nice little foot out of that if I was you. I've got plenty of depth because I've got about 13 mil. Because I had a false, false turn on. Right, um, Brian from Greenhaven, I think it's Brian from Greenhaven, is asking, does the vacuum chuck leave marks on the turning? It can do, yes. Depends on the finish, usually. The finish and what the actual chuck is, the surface of the chuck is. And also, if you're turning... Um, wet wood as opposed to dry wood because mm. if you turn in wet yeah. wood and the vacuum is off is obviously it's using the vacuum so it's actually pulling moisture out of the wood right right it, then it <laughs> it, rev it up to 2000 and it'll help That's you get uh, rev it up to 2000 so you can get it done quicker yep yeah if it does leave marks, I find just take some sandpaper and sand with the grain, and mm. you can eliminate them. Right. Let me just uh, turn this on a sec. <sighs> there's something wrong see, with it. There's something wrong with it, Mark. We can't hear it. No, yes. I, no I, I was about to say I can't hear what Mark's saying. It must be a bit too loud. Yeah, you have to speak. <laughs> AGK says, speed is your friend, I'm told. 
I don't know who might have told him that. <laughs> not, not always. Yeah. No. Well, that, 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 that is actually that might have been... in reference. Sorry. That's in, that's in ref that's in reference to something said to Jamie um, yes. in a in, in a chat uh, a few years ago when Jamie was yeah. turning something. I think it was a piece of resin, and uh, Mark Mark turned around and said, "Speed is your friend." And it blew yeah, up. Yeah. Right. It has. I don't know if you can tell. It has left just a little mark. You can see it. Mm -hmm. Right, now, Paul, Paul has put in, those holdfast chucks have an internal and external O-ring with a hard plastic ridge between them. Too much vacuum and the O-ring overcompresses and the plastic ridge leaves a dent in the wood. Yeah. And he's also said, don't ask me how I know this. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> That'll, that'll sand out with hand sanding with the grain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It won't take much. <laughs> Intermediate says, Andrew has never been up to speed. <laughs> I can't hand sand too much because I've got through. <laughs> oh, God. You wish. <laughs> it's a bit I've not had a vacuum check. We've not used one in a lot of years, but... So you also those, find marks, sometimes. those marks are gone now. Yep. Yep. Right. You also find sometimes with a vacuum chuck, it will leave a visible ring, but if you put it down and walk away and come back tomorrow, that ring is gone. Just there you go. Really that does need a bit more finishing. A bit more. You can see some. But it's very thin. It really is. With Sacrificial foot, which acts as a base. Yeah. And, you know, and it's kind of black and yellow. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Mark. That, that, that's where I was thinking about the bottom of it as well. Yeah, it was rubbish. It was really rubbish. In my defense, there's no defense. I only unboxed that. Pete, when did that, when did that uh, airbrush arrive? Oh, three weeks ago, and you've been testing it ever since. I mean, oh, oh yesterday. <laughs> Mark, you, you, you could just paint the entire back black and still save it. Yeah. Take yeah, okay. off the outer edges and and just paint the whole black, bottom black. Good to put it back on there. No, you don't even have to put it back on. Just lay it down on the ground. Well, unless you want to paint the rest of your lathe, too. Oh, yeah, I've already started. Yeah. But anyway, let me bring these reprobates back in. Where's me? Somebody so you did say you could... Are you, are you calling me a reprobate? Well, I'm calling you something you can't say. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, now I'm hurt. Actually, I can't do a thing because I can't find my mouse. There's half a sandwich still here from this morning. <laughs> it's ben was miles. just saying he hopes that isn't your fire, that door isn't your fire exit. The oh, one that door. behind you. No, that's just an exit to get in next door. Do you want a mouse has gone? Uh, bear with a sec, guys. Oh. Just, uh, Talk about yourselves. <laughs> okay. Here is it. Okay. I can't even blame you for this one. What are you looking for? Oh, there it is. It's oh, right there. Bottom is it's grey. So. Right, you're all coming in now. Prepare okay. yourselves. <laughs> Just got my pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> like you ever wear them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Against my better judgment, square dish with corners. Very thin. Yeah, about three mil thin. At its thinnest part. Maybe a little bit less. And I actually kept the corners, so I was really pleased with that. 
but uh, must practice more on the colouring. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm no bloody artist. Just a wood turner. Oh, right. well, you told me you were a piss artist. Oh, yeah, I am. That's the source plate. Uh, you better look at Doug's mark. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Stay mark, there. Mark, you were here for this, I think, weren't you? Was that what you did last night? No, 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 oh. no. No, this was like my first or second live. All right, Jess. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were upset that I did a, a square one and kept all four corners. Kept corners on, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's just, still hanging around. It's it's, it's gonna it's, it's not so going anywhere fair. either. <laughs> not going anywhere. That one stays right here. I'm not too proud yeah. of that one. No, all the others are uh, lots of nice comments coming through. Mark. Yep. Thank you so much, everybody. So that was covering <laughs> for Wayne, but I'm not going to do my own live tomorrow night because I'm only doing one live a week. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll understood. I'm teaching for the rest of the week now. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So am I. Um, off, off doing a big, big project that I can't talk about yet on Monday. Top secret. Hush, hush. But I'm very excited by it. Good. Uh, that'll be coming to you, YouTube soon. And then teaching all the rest of next week as well, I think. Excellent. Yeah. So busy, busy. May not be alive next week because I've got students nearly every day next week. And actually, next Thursday is my brother's memorial. So mm. I'm not going to be in any fit state that's, to. That's way more important than I thought. Yeah, yes. totally understandable. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to knock it on the head. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Those that didn't, you know what to do. Those that did, you know what to do. <laughs> Probably already done it. <laughs> uh, see, yeah, uh, don't forget before you leave to hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up or either any either one. The up or the down, doesn't matter. Um, Wayne, are you possibly going to be back next week? I uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, like you said earlier on this evening, I could always uh, pull the stool along and sit down and do some turning. Even if you just do a Q and A. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't tend to go so well. I've, I've had a um... Wayne's Q and A's. What's your favourite type of red? <laughs> <laughs> um, you enjoy a nice cheeky uh, outback. No, to tell you the truth, if I did another Q and A, it would probably turn into a foodie thing anyway. But no, mm -hmm. somebody somebody asked me um, in the comments uh, on one of my lives about doing a video about mortises and tenons and where you use a mortise as opposed to a tenon. So that should be quite an interesting one. Uh, so I, yeah. I might do that as a live. Good. Okay. And get, and, and, and get a, a, a few people in as earworms. Um, so we can actually um, have people talking about their preferences as well. Yeah. And maybe, you know, the, them talking about their preferences, I could maybe do examples. Good plan. So we might do something like that next week. Good. Well, Pete gave me a couple of ideas, really good ideas for lives. Sadly, I can't do most of them because they're all illegal. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> One or two that were legal. I've ordered, I've ordered the Shetland pony. We're going to do that one. There was even one that was possible. Wayne's frozen. Oh, he's just. No, no, I'm still here. Oh, your picture's yeah. frozen. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Perpetual wave. <laughs> yeah. Caesar has. Caesar is amongst us. All right. I'm going to knock it on the head. Bye, everybody. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Night. Night. Night.